Last week, we discussed how the certification pilot would not be surprised by the power loss. In fact, they induce it. Clearly, this is an advantage that you will not have in the real world. But there is another advantage they enjoy during testing. They build up to the more difficult points on the curve. They begin with the least challenging combinations of height and speed, and then gradually, methodically move toward the more difficult ones. You will not have the same luxury. Operationally, your engine failure will occur with no consideration given to your level of preparation or your current flight profile. You will not be given the opportunity to practice a few times in advance. The first one will be the one that counts. We also emphasize that during certification testing, landings were performed to a smooth, hard surface, as opposed to what may be available to you. Also consider that during testing, the helicopter may touch down at any speed. The advisory circular recommends a speed below 40 knots, but that's not a limitation, nor is the amount of resultant ground slide. During testing, the helicopter may touch down at any speed and slide any distance, so long as there is no permanent damage to the aircraft. But in an actual auto rotation, touching down at a speed much above a brisk walk or possibly slower, may be unacceptable. Or you may need to land on water or be flying at night. Neither of these circumstances require engine failure testing at critical height velocity combinations. Essentially, the night and water evaluations simply corroborate the recommended takeoff profile. But operationally, you may be at or near a crucial combination and flying at night and or over water. Clearly, all possible combinations of height, speed, wind, weight, temperature, surface composition, illumination, and pilot alertness cannot be tested. Remember, on week one, we discussed that within the HV envelope, successful autorotational descents have not been demonstrated. And as we discussed on week two, some conditions may be more advantageous. You may need to execute an autorotation when you're flying at half mass while flying over an airport with 20 knots of headwind. But alternatively, you could be flying power line patrol near gross mass at 100 feet AGO over a freshly plowed field after a recent rain with a 10 knot tailwind.